everyone. Welcome to week four of our The Dream of You online Bible study. We have another audio teaching with our friend Joe Saxton, who will be bringing us a word. But Joe, I just want to bring attention to something that you do in your book, The Dream of You, that Mm -hmm. I love and that I talk about quite frequently. And that is at the beginning of every chapter, you Mm -hmm. write a letter to the the reader. And I'm going to put you on the spot and say, what made you come up with the the idea of putting a letter, a personal letter, um, at the beginning of every chapter of your book? Yeah, I think what it was is I knew that we would go there in con- in the content, mm-hmm. um, that I wanted to talk about some of the most vulnerable, maybe some of the most personal, maybe for some of us embarrassing chapters of our lives. And... Um, and I, and I wanted that to not feel as confrontative as it could be, confrontational as it could be. I wanted us to imagine ourselves sitting down, having a conversation, having a coffee to know this is safe. It's, it's, it's vulnerable and it may be raw, but it, it's safe to be able to just, okay, if it's just you and me in the room, let's just have a chat for a second. If it's just you and I just talking about these things, daring to look under the hood of our lives to see what's really going on, it's okay. And um, that's that was part part of the reason behind it. And I wanted to I wanted to bring to mind the women who I'd met at events and who had coached over the years and their stories and um, the kind of conversations we'd had and say, Let, yes, it's a book. But um, when you're reading that book, it's just you and these pages. Yeah. And I wanted you to feel seen in those pages. Well, you have such a gift of doing just that. So I love that you have that at the beginning of your chapters and Thank just you. the way that you invite people into your story is um, is such a gift. So with that, everyone, Joe, we would love to hear what you have to say about week four and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Great. Thank you. Well, greetings, everybody. I say <laughs> greetings um, slightly formally because if you've been on this journey for a little while, you will have no- you may have noticed something. By the time you get to this point, unpacking these things of your identity, addressing things, you might realize you have a little fight on your hands. <laughs> you know I mean? yes. Wouldn't it have been lovely if it was like, okay, yay, I'm a new person. Right. Boom. That'd be nice. <laughs> Boom. All done. All done. Check. New identity. Check. Rather than this kind of, oh, why am I feeling worse before I'm feeling better? Mm. Oh, why is this like blood, sweat and tears? Why is this hard? Why am I clawing back my God-given identity? Why is there a fight in my hands? And more importantly, how do I win? Yes, <laughs> how do I win all wondering. this fight? <laughs> because it's so tough. It's so tough. And, and I, and I want to encourage you if you're in that, if you're in that place where it's like, okay, I began to see where I lost my voice. I began to see what happened to me. And, I, and, and it's rough and it's hard to hang in there. Um, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> am mm-hmm. I getting... Is, am, is, is this what's happening? Is this the, how it is? And it's like, yeah, it is. It is how it is. Um, and you're not doing this wrong. You are laying claim back to a God-given identity that the enemy of our souls has saw fit to mess with for years. And when we look at the, you know, we don't have to look far. One look at the news, one look at the world around yeah. us, and we see that um, that a broken world breaks people. Um destroys people you know the bible talks about the enemy came to steal kill and destroy and um he has a vested interest in doing that but when we start reclaiming back what god um sent his son to the cross for when we start saying actually redemption it's like losing territory uh (laughs) you you know as you begin as you begin to embrace your god-given identity and realize you're worth something you start thinking differently don't you? you start differently which means that you don't say yes to um the people who have been destructive for you and you start finding you're making better choices it, there's a fight on your hands mm-hmm. and that's a good thing friends but i do want to offer you a little nugget that we see from the scriptures that will help us in the fight if you know what one, one of the things i love seeing in the world is when there are these truths of scripture that kind of are, are so powerful and so well-known we see them used in wider culture and one of those is the story of David and Goliath Mm -hmm. you know if you talk about David and Goliath to anybody even if they don't really like follow Jesus in any particular way don't even kind of respect the Bible or value it they kind of dig the story of David and Goliath why because everybody (laughs) understands facing a giant and feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed yeah (laughs) do you know what I mean Everybody wants to be a giant killer. Why? Because we all have these towering situations and circumstances and issues that intimidate our lives. Everybody loves the underdog. 
who somehow manages to overcome this mm-hmm. huge thing. And that David and Goliath story hits us at a visceral, um, deep level. But there's some nuggets in there that will help us as we fight our journey. And um, I, I love this. I love the story. I love it because the odds are so miserable at the beginning. You're like, right. oh no, this is just awful. <laughs> there is a giant and he has a javelin, which they even specify how much it weighs just to intimidate you further. And no one wants to face him. Why? Because he's going to win. (laughs) He's going to win. And everybody is afraid except David who rocks up as like with sandwiches for his brothers. And he's like, hold on a second. Why, um, why are we, why are we worried about this? And on one level, it seems that David is arrogant Mm -hmm. and he keeps on mentioning this thing about this uncircumcised Philistine, which is awkward because it's like, David, now is not the time. (laughs) Now is not the time to, why, why are we, this is not where one should place one's hyper-focus, David. Let it go. But he keeps on going on and on. If only you were there to just, you know, know, redirect his words. Redirect. David, please, please see the sweat from everybody's brow. See everybody wishing there was an iPhone whereby they could text their family to send their (laughs) goodbye wishes. why Why are we doing this? And at the point when David finally meets Goliath, um, even even Goliath is kind of exalted. He's he's insulted, but he's like low key. Am I a dog that you? What, who 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 is this? Mm-hmm. I I'll, at the beginning of this battle, I asked you to bring me a man, and you brought me this child, this child, to to deal with me. And he said, okay, I'll deal with you and get you out of the way, and then we'll we'll keep going. And then David says these powerful words that I, that I want to unpack to help us understand what what's at stake here and why it's important for us to press in here. And he says this in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45. For those Brits who are listening, I know you and I say 1 Samuel, but in America they say 1 Samuel, so we're just going to go with it for today. <laughs> 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 says this. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And again, it's not bravado here. And even him asking about this uncircumcised Philistine all the time, and as you see the whole chapter, wasn't bravado here. He says, you come at me with all your power, all your strength, your sword, your spear, your javelin. I don't come at you with any of that. I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. Now, we know a name is not just a reference point, an introduction, Mr., Mrs. When in the Bible, when we talk about name, it refers to your reputation, all that makes you you, your, um, yes, your honor, but your identity. I come at you with the name of God. I come mm. at you with the reputation of God, the power of God, the character of God, the might of God, the strength of God, the God, and, um, and, and he represents our armies. And the reason why I keep on saying to you and everybody else that you're uncircumcised is because circumcision is a reminder of whose we mm. are. Circumcision is a reminder that we don't come to this fight alone, that we have one who is a stronger covenant partner, who provides for us, who gives us a new identity, who takes our old identity, casts it aside and gives us a whole new one who cancels all our debts and is our protector and fights all our battles on our behalf and so when I look at you Goliath I actually don't see you I see the giant that's bigger than you behind you Mm. who's going to deal with you the name of the Lord Almighty because see you're not fighting me you're fighting God and God wins this one Mm -hmm. and so I don't need a spear or a javelin or a sword when you've got the name of God on your side And as you fight every single one of your battles, which are so overwhelming, I don't say this to belittle your battles, friends. The battle is real. The struggle is real. That's why it's memed everywhere, because it's real. It's actually (laughs) happening. It's overwhelming. It is too much for you. We don't need to use some kind of toxic positivity to pretend that these things aren't. Yes, they're too much. We're not going to call, we're not going to call it fine when it's not fine. What we're doing here is we're laying hold of who helps us in this battle. You, friend, are in covenant with the living God. And it wasn't the covenant that was cut by the blood of animals and things like that. This was the blood of Jesus. This is the new covenant where now he is the one who takes on your debts. Remember, forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors, it says in the Gospels. He is the one who has given you a new identity. Remember, it says in the scriptures, if anyone is in Christ, you have a new identity. You're a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. It's covenant language. That whole in Christ stuff you see in Ephesians chapter one, 
covenant language. You have someone stronger than you dealing with your battles on your behalf. When you are doing this stuff now, you are never alone. It's never just you in this. It's you and the King of Kings Mm. and all the resources of heaven and on earth that he provides for you to help you through this thing. And so, yes, you have a fight on your hands and the struggle is real. Call on your covenant partner. Come at these battles and your struggles in the name of the Lord Almighty. Knowing that he brings his resources, his provision, his protection, and always, always, always his love Mm. to lead you forward. And um, as a result of that, you will slay your giants. God will slay your giants and will lead you forward. Amen to that. That was a motivational speech. If I've ever heard one, Joe, that was wonderful. What I love about what you said is first you reminded us that God is always with us, surrounding us, protecting us, fighting our battles. And also we at Online Bible Studies really value community as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, God is with you, but we also want to encourage you that um, there are people here in this community that would love to pray for you, that would love to Mm -hmm. come alongside you, that would love to just hold your arms up when you might not be able to um, go on another day. And so just know that Online Bible Studies is a wonderful place for community to get plugged in. Um, And so we're so grateful that you signed up for this study just so you could be reminded that you are not alone. God is with you, but also we love you as well as you go and fight your battles um, that are out there. So Joe, thank you so much for another teaching. We get to have two more weeks with you. So we're excited to hear what you have to say. And remember everyone, when you know the truth, the truth of God's word and live it out, it changes everything. And so we look forward to diving into the Bible even more with you next week. Bye everyone.